Hey folks, today we are changing out our coolant on the 2013 Dodge Charger. Okay, first step, you want to get car up on ramps and uh, you want to come and take these 7mm little screws out. So, you want to take them off of where the, the body meets this guard right here. So the body meets the guard. You don't need to do these under here because that's for this little this little rubber lip that mine is all screwed up on so anyway boom 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 and then another one over there <clears throat> all right we got it off this hole right here we're looking at it from this is the from the front of the vehicle to the back that's a 10 millimeter screw and then you got some plastic Paparuskis that, that there's three on each side over here and then on the other side as well. Uh, a good tool for that is that little popper. I'll I'll put a link for that. And anyway, so that's getting that off. Alright. Now we're on the passenger side underneath. There's your drain hose. And right up behind it is the pit call. No, not that kind, you devil. So, I'm going to turn it counterclock to the one quarter turn, and then this should start draining out. Alright, so these are the pliers that we used, and you can see it's coming out. It, it ended up being about a 360 degree turn on it instead of a fourth, so uh, <clears throat> we'll wait for it to drain. Also, if you take off the radiator cap, pressure cap, then it will drain faster. All right, I got caught up in some other things, so it got dark, but we are fully drained, and it's still dripping a tiny bit, so I'm gonna put a little uh, paper towel up in there while I drain this, that way it doesn't get on the ground. I don't know, just a little tip. So I'll drain that and uh, I'll show you what's next. All right guys, so I took this out, the reservoir tank, tried to clean it out because you can see how yellow and nasty it looks. It's supposed to be a clear color that you see on the, the deals there, these. Uh, didn't work, but at least it's a little bit cleaner inside. So if, if you want a good looking one you're just gonna have to buy a new tank I think they're only like fifteen dollars anyway so it's easy to take it out it's just uh, this uh, this connector here and then it's the upper hose and then this is the lower hose and you just need some regular adjustable pliers and you just pinch it <coughs> pinch it so you can move it like this this is going to go to the front and then down there is the lower hose same thing you just pinch it so you can take it out and put it back in so that's what we're going to do is put it back in ended up taking the, the intake off because I was having a hard time getting to the that bottom hose with the, the uh, pliers so this should be easier but anyway I noticed that um, the little foam seal was not attached anymore, so it's a good opportunity to re-glue that. Might help it suction a little better, help it performance a tiny, tiny bit. <clears throat> and I took the opportunity to clean up down in here, and I like to keep everything kind of perfectionistly clean, but, well, maybe not perfectionist, but a good amount. So it's a good opportunity to clean that up. You might want to do that too, take the intake off. It's a 8mm bolt that goes in here. And then you just have to loosen up the hose clamp to take it up. And I just, I've got it sitting on top of there right now. So I'll go back in there and get that bottom hose attached to the coolant tank right there. You see it? I super glued that back, which is probably not the best thing to use super glue because it's going to be annoying getting it off when it needs to be replaced. But I went with what I had. Anyway, I got that back on. It's coming in from the side with the pliers. And then using my right hand on the other side and pushed it in. 
And now I'm gonna put the intake back on and then we'll fill up the uh, the tank and flush it. Also a little tip, your thermostat is underneath the uh, air intake hose. So you just undo the, the clamp and you should be able to move it out of the way. You don't really need to take off the entire intake. Uh, but it's down, down there. That's the bleed valve for it. And you can you can undo that just counterclockwise, just a few turns when you're putting in the uh, the coolant. But the actual thermostat is inside the uh, inside that black housing right there. So if you want to replace it, then you just have to take off the hose and then undo the the bolts right there. There's one on top and one on bottom. And that's where it is, folks. We drained the original coolant, and then I filled it up with deionized water. I closed the petcock after I drained it, so you gotta remember that. Go back down there and close the petcock. Filled it back up with uh, deionized water, which I bought five gallons of it at uh, Whole Foods for like two bucks. And uh, now we're gonna do a second flush, this time with a uh, flushing chemical from Royal Purple. I'll put a link in the description. So we're just gonna put the whole bottle in and then top it off with the deionized water and then we're gonna run it again I'm gonna come back cuz I need two hands alright so we put the entire thing in there now I'm gonna top it off with water and I'm gonna put the radiator cap back on and then I'm gonna run the car for about 15 minutes with the heat all the way up high and the fan on the lowest setting all right, I keep saying radiator cap, but I mean overflow tank cap. I guess it doesn't really matter. All right, let's go turn it on. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> make sure your heat is all the way up. And make sure your fan is to one, so the lowest setting. And now we're gonna run it for 10 or 15 minutes. All right, we drained the Royal Flush treatment, and now I went ahead and filled it back up again with uh, deionized water. So we're gonna flush it one more time with just straight water. Also, if you're having trouble getting your pet cock to turn, because you might have never had the coolant change in your car before like me and the plastic just got a little bit uh, stuck together so WD-40 uh, it's always a good thing for that and alright so we're going to do straight water for the last time if the water looks clear when we drain it and then we'll add the coolant after that well, another little uh, tip if you don't have an airtight funnel I do recommend getting one of those makes it a lot easier I'll put a link to it but uh, you can just kind of rig it with the towel this is when you're doing the water flush um, so just to relieve the air you can just put the towel over it and uh, open it up a little bit and I, I got the air out right now so you don't hear anything but you'll hear some of it come out if, if you have a lot of pressure built up just open it a little bit because it will spray everywhere and you want to try to minimize that um, you just want to try to get the air out and not the liquid but uh, you wear a glove if you if it's super hot if you're worried about that um, you know and try to get the towel all around here so it catches as much liquid as possible this the charger has a, a overflow tube and I think this serves as a bleeder as well I'm not sure but uh, Anyways, that's that's a hack you can do, but definitely get that filter, the uh, the funnel that's airtight that you can just sit on top of here. Cause it just makes it a whole lot easier. You'll see that in some other videos that you watch. Uh, another way you can release pressure is, like I talked about earlier, is that uh, little valve right there. But that's you gotta take off the the uh, hose right here. It's just kind of cumbersome. I mean, you can do that when you're actually filling in the coolant. So, 
Like as you're pouring in the coolant, just have that loosened up and when you start to see it come out of there, just close it up and so that will have a little bit of air out. Uh, but you might, you probably still have air in the system after that, so you could come back and do this method with the towel. But at that point, you'll have coolant, so just definitely be careful with that. Uh, but you know, like I said, the funnel is the best method. And again, I want to mention the thermostat, which is down here. It's it's in that housing that's below that valve. I didn't take mine out. It's taken a lot longer to flush it because I didn't, because it's it's impeding the flow through the hose here. So. You, you'll probably want to do that, and that way you'll get a, a chance to uh, see if you need to replace the thermostat too. So, learn from my mistakes there. You can squeeze this hose to try and push some air out of that valve too when you have it open. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so, if you hear a little slushing around uh, behind the dash, that's air. So you'll hear the actual air in there, and that's how you know for sure that you need to go relieve it somehow. Uh, also, you want to make sure that, you know, it's hot when it's coming out. That will let you know that there's not a lot of air in the system, and the hotter it is, the less air there is in there. So um, keep an eye on that, and uh, the, the less air that's in there, the, more, the better your flush system is going to be each time you flush. So... I'm still doing water flushes right now because I'm waiting for it to get clear when it comes out at the, of the hose, the drain hose. So that's where we're at. All right. So I accidentally pulled the, the drain plug out. Now you can uh, see how the it sits in there. So when you put the drain plug back, you can kind of set these two fins that are on each side away from those two little pins in there so try not to take it out, I did it on accident it's definitely a pain to get back in there alrighty so ended up using some WD-40 on the drain plug to get it back in there it went in like a charm after that uh, I guess the plastic got dried out from the flush chemical anyway uh, another thing that I probably forgot to mention was that you're trying to, you know, flush it out. So you want to rev up your engine to about 1,500 to 2,000 RPM and do that for, you know, a few minutes to uh, get everything circling through. Also, that will help bring air bubbles. Or, you know, it's going to pressurize the system, so it'll help bring air bubbles to the top where you can go let it off the cap. And... Uh, when you see your temperature getting too high, like, that's starting to get too high, so I know there's still a lot of air in the system. The air coming out is not that hot right now, and so I'm going to go relieve. All right, so I just let out another batch of uh, deionized water flush, and I, I turned the pet cock and drained it when it was still hot, like really hot, and uh, that actually got a lot of the air out the bottom. You could see it just pushing out a lot of air with the water and so I just filled it up again with uh, the ionized water because it was still a little pink and uh, it's already the heater core is like already warm and I don't hear any air in the system and it's super hot so that might be another tip to just uh, open the petcock while it's hot and uh, why just when you're doing the water flushes and then it just makes it makes it all quicker so you're getting a better flush the least amount of air in the system. This is a uh, Mopar specific coolant. Definitely recommend doing that if you have a, uh, a Dodge or just, you know, look in your manual. This is concentrate. So all they did, I poured this out into another container and then I filled this back up with deionized water or distilled water and then poured that into the other container to mix them together and then I got a 50-50 so it's just cheaper if you're buying it online or something just get the concentrate and uh, that way you can ensure that the water quality that you're using is good too alright guys coming back to you after a few weeks of uh, having the coolant inside I appreciate uh, you sticking with me I know the video is kind of chaotic I'm getting better I'm still new 
All right, so let's do a little summary here. Put the Mopar coolant in there, the correct coolant for this vehicle. It's definitely making a huge difference. I put in purpleized treatment after I put the coolant in. This is for uh, preventing corrosion on the aluminum and also for uh, optimizing just the, the cooling system itself. So this definitely feels like a good investment to me so far. The temperature of the coolant, which I noticed by the dash, is uh, easily 15 degrees cooler than the junk that was in here before. And I'm sure that this has something to do with it. But even if this doesn't lower your temperature, it's good just to have the uh, anti-corrosion effects in there. So they, and they have a video proving that too. It basically just prevents water from sticking to the walls of the, the block, the engine block. And so those water droplets would eventually corrode the aluminum, but this tries to get as many of those off as possible. So that's the science behind it. But I'll put a link for that. Uh, we also used Royal Flush, which is just, you know, of course, flushing it out. I feel like that did a good job, too, of getting the old corrosion out because there was a ton of corrosion. And the, the orange coolant that was in here, that was the wrong kind. Okay, now to the petcock. Uh... I didn't go and take it out because that's too much work. Let's pretend this is Petcock. So I said if you're having trouble turning it, uh, shoot it with WD-40. Not the best advice, but not the worst either. So if you do that and it helps you get it out, just make sure you replace the rubber O-ring gasket on there. And uh, you can, you know, just take it out and size it and uh, either get it at auto parts or this is actually a plumbing one, but it will work fine too. You know, you just put it, put it on. Actually, I'll come back. Okay, you see how we put it on, where it goes. And then what you want to do is um, hit it with some dielectric grease or silicone grease. You can use food grade silicone too, that works. Uh, this, this is just a little bit better because it has a higher temperature range that it can handle. And since you're working with high and lows in a car it's just smarter to do that so you just want just a little bit I'm not gonna actually do it but you you know use a, a, a q-tip so you don't get too much this is just demonstration so get it all around there and push it back in and you should be good on your pet cock uh, you might have to you might have to kind of tap it with uh, uh, something hard to get it past those those little teeth that I showed you earlier on the uh, the petcock but once it's in there just you know turn it clockwise and lock it and you should be good to go all right i think that about covers it i'll put a link for the mopar coolant for the royal flush for the purple ice uh for the dielectric grease and uh, on the gaskets uh you know like i said these are these are for plumbing but they're just regular o-rings so i mean if you can find a silicone one, that would be really cool, but they don't really make a lot of those. But silicone would be the best quality. Uh, but buy a set. Like, if you go to the auto parts store and try to just get one gasket, they're going to charge you a lot more than it's worth. So just get a set, and that way you'll have more for other stuff you're doing. And uh, happy uh, working on your cars, guys. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I left out. Um... Uh, Oh yeah, on on doing this the hack way. So the best way to get the air out without using the funnel, which again is the, the correct way to do it, is just build up pressure in the car by either just uh, revving it in park or just drive it a little bit and then turn the car off and come over here and release it with the towel over the top. Now just do it like little bits, you know, like just do a tiny turn and, and feel the, the air rush out and then you'll see the coolant pop up too. So just try to get it where the coolant doesn't actually come out the top, you know, that's because you don't want to waste it and just getting the air out. But you'll, you'll find a, a groove with that. But, you know, again, just if you have the funnel, that way you don't have to worry about doing the, the hack way and it'll be easier. But, uh, yeah, so use the... The coolant that your car manufacturer says to and purple ice is a great addition to it see you guys later